The third and final Rangdan Crusade, the Rangdan Xenocide. Despite being the most recent in history, the Third Rangdan War, or the True Rangdan Xenocide, is the least known of these three campaigns. We only know as much as we do about the First and Second Wars because of the records on the Forge World of Zana II, as well as vague references within the Orders of the Ever-Elusive Dark Angels. What little records from Zana II that we do have confirmed that the Third War was a large-scale conflict that did indeed push all the way to the capital planet of the Rangda Menace in the Rangda system. All that remains of these deployments, however, are the names of the Titan Houses involved, as well as the accolades that they achieved. Black Library, or the publishing branch of GW, also has an issue with the Xenocide since they keep altering the timeline and events during the Great Crusade. I know this is pretty difficult to keep on top of when you have as big of a collaborative writing project as Warhammer 40k is, but it could be a lot less confusing. It wasn't until the early 2010s when GW finally started delving into the Great Crusade, expanding on a lot of the conflicts the individual Primarchs were forged in. In 2012, with the book Betrayal, we started to see a connection between the Sloth murder mines and the Rangda, as it is directly mentioned that they were fighting alongside the Rangda on the capital planet of, surprise surprise, Rangda wherein a Warhound Dreadnought was incapacitated by these very same murder mines. One year later, in 2013 in the book Massacre, it's said that the Salamanders were fighting a desperate war against the Orcs, as every other force able to be brought to bear was forced on the Rangda Menace. In 2017, it is first referenced that the Emperor is forced to open the Noctis Labyrinth, containing the Void Dragon, or the Labyrinth of Night, up until the release of Inferno in 2017, the Rangda were seen as a very serious threat, but it's revealed only now that they almost toppled the Imperium, and only a desperate Hail Mary from the Emperor of Man himself actually saved the Imperium. Also within Inferno is where we see the first potential alliance, or at the very least a neutral third party swooping in to take advantage of the carnage wrought by the Enslavers. I have a fun theory about them that I'm going to put in the next video, but that's for another time. Two years later, in First Legion, we get the first descriptions of fish people, or jellyfish people. It's described as Drukhari-like, but I prefer fish people because I can fit in some HP Lovecraft references. Within First Legion, we also get the first mention that the Dark Angels are making a serious push into Rangdon space. However, the losses this time are significantly worse than the Advex Moors campaign. After almost seven years of hyping up the Rangda, in a book that I completely forgot to write down in the script, uh, the Rangda are now relegated to just a problem for the Dark Angels, and within the span of a decade, the entire Great Crusade, as well as all of the major events that we had come to love before this, such as the Xenocides or the Ulanor campaign, had changed dramatically. And granted, while this does give us the reader a lot of fun theories, then we can weave together depending on whatever books we've read or whatever media we've consumed it is also extremely confusing two of the best sources for the entirety of the third xenocide are the dark angels and the alpha legion both of which are notoriously unreliable sources with the dark angels having levels of secrecy extending infinitely in each direction and the entire shtick of the alpha legion is just hey are we lying or not? Thankfully, we have records outside of the Alpha Legion that corroborate that Alpharius and Omegon were reunited on the Rangda Overrun planet, and that Alpharius had to allow for Omegon to be discovered as all the others had been, with the proper dignities and celebrations, even though at number 20, this was quite rehearsed, and everyone was just very happy they didn't have to do this again. This was also the first time that the Alpha Legion had been seen as a complete legion to the rest of their brother warriors. They had previously been involved in clandestine operations within Rangda occupied space, and would appear as grey, iconless hulks leaving as quickly as they arrived. For certain, we know that after the Rangdan Xenocides, Lehman Russ, or Father Furry himself, is widely known as the Emperor's Executioner, as it is only said after this point that he and his legion are designed to be the counter to Astartes or the Astartes killers. Essentially, if you need a legion chapter or any size gathering of space marines that need to be dealt with after the Rangda Crusade, you call the Space Wolves. While sources vary wildly from a slaughter of an already battered and beaten foe, 
UFO. Some claim a bloody attritional campaign that absolutely ravaged the Dark Angels. I once more have to side with the records from Zana 2. We know for certain that during the first and second wars with the Rangda, that mere human and Xeno thralls piloting their weapons of war with damn near suicidal zeal could inflict devastating losses to multiple Imperial armadas. I truly can't believe that they wouldn't have any ships in reserve or defending their trade routes. If we are to assume, though, that they did bring even 99% of their naval capacity into their push southwest during the Second War, they would still have billions and billions of strike craft around each planet, as well as the infrastructure to essentially print these out with the ease that we produce cars today. In the late 890s of M30, we do have a shaky agreement of sorts between sources that the extermination or purging of both Rangda and Imperial worlds of the like happened at a massive scale. This level of purge is said to be on the level of an orc infestation, complete and total incineration. No stone was left unturned, and all of the atmospheres were choked with the ash and cries of countless souls. Notably, the two main sources differ wildly here on how the war actually started. Either the White Scars easily vanquished the Rangda threat, or the Dark Angels and Space Wolves fought a bloody war of attrition, losing over 50,000 of the Emperor's Angels. I choose to favor the Space Wolves and the Dark Angels once again being led by their Primarch, as that is what we have the most references to, and the Order of the Broken Claws wasn't disbanded. Some of the notable battles during the Third Xenocide include Bar Savor, where the previously mentioned reunion and unveiling of the Alpha Legion occurred. Bar Savor is notable not only for the Alpha Legion, but also a large mention of the Sloth Murder Mines. The Dark Angels gained a fierce reputation during the seventh week-long Battle of Moro, where only three companies of Dark Angels held against a literal weight of human and Xeno slaves. So many bodies were thrown against the Dark Angels at this time that the regality of how much mass the Rangda had truly held back, and that even a meager equivalent of a planetary defense force could inflict 90% losses to the First Legion. Lesser known but no less bloody battles include the Great Citadel of Vorskag, and a massive space battle over Morsair, which left a beautiful haze of shrapnel to forever be pulled along by the winds of the void. With lesser legions, these losses might have deterred them from advancing or given them time for thought or reconsideration. But for the warriors of the Dark Angels and the Space Wolves, to waver in the face of duty was damn near unthinkable. And as the ever-tightening noose of the Imperium closed on the Rangdun Menace, it was the Rangda who realized upon their homeworld that it was not the Imperium who looked death into the eyes, but the Rangda, Titan Legions, the Emperor's Angels, and all arms available across all branches of the Imperium were accounted for on the Rangda home system. As the final assault on Rangda Primus began, Imperial Navy assets would begin to fan out, conducting one of the largest systemic purges in Imperial record. An area the size of a segmentum was diligently and completely purged of all life, not allowing for a single life pod or battered space hulk to escape their cleansing. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Uh, just wanted to say thank you really for the support on the first video. It is objectively the strongest of the three or four in the series because it is what we have the most concrete facts on because of records of the Dark Angels and the Order of the Broken Claws. Um, next video though, it's going to be literally just a schizophrenic rant about all of the various theories and how I rank them as well as what the Xenocides are even based off of. But anyways, thanks for watching guys. Have a nice day.